we have been looking at Fick's law with the hope that we should be able to relate the diffusion mass flux to uh, the concentration gradient so that we would now reckon uh, the concentration gradient let us say in terms of a mass fraction um, as one of the primary unknowns uh, then we should start thinking about what would be, what would be its corresponding equation okay. So when you now want to uh, solve the combustion problem that means you have to actually find out how the composition of your mixture of reacting species uh, changes. Um, uh, so, the, so your 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 uh, uh, reactant uh, the species concentration is is an unknown, and therefore correspondingly you need to have an equation that determines it. And the equation that we will be looking for is uh, the equation of conservation of mass of species A. This is this is a uh, a general mass conservation equation for a particular species uh, as an extension of uh, what we have already seen before in the in the case of uh, uh, the thermal thermochemical uh, processes that we have looked at uh, like constant volume constant pressure uh, fixed mass reactors and uh, the the well stirred reactor and so on. Uh, so there we had uh, a very limited limited approach to conservation of uh, species or uh, species mass but here we will try to actually have the most general approach that is possible that would include convective effects as well as uh, in, in the most general way as well as diffusion effects right. So we want to now uh, bring those into account in addition to um, unsteady effects that, that are possible um, and uh, chemical reactions right. So the way we want to do this is to now consider a, uh, a arbitrary volume so we can now look at this as like a, uh, a, a volume. So the shading basically is to give a 3D effect. The uh, the, the surface is uh, the surface is denoted by sigma, and uh, the, the the volume itself is uh, denoted by script V. Uh, and uh, so we, we consider a consider a an arbitrary control volume. I would like to emphasize that uh, the, the, the arbitrary arbitrariness of the control volume uh, is pretty important for us okay and um, that is what actually tries to make it quite general for us and uh, we will probably try to get the same equations in the end but we will invoke the arbitrariness of the control volume to do this pretty soon. So then the question is how do you how do you conserve mass um, the, the answer is uh, just like you conserve anything else okay. So how do you conserve anything the answer is um, so you now look at a situation uh, like let us say a control volume and then you have to now keep in account the rate of um, rate of change of whatever you want inside the control volume as equal to whatever is uh, coming from outside versus what is going out what is what, what's coming in okay. So, uh, this is this is pretty general as I have said earlier uh, you, you know this you know to do this from looking at your bank account on, on how much money you have like versus how much money is getting depleted uh, versus what is coming in and what is going out and so on. So, so this is a very uh, intuitive uh, uh, idea nothing nothing great uh, greatly mathematical about it. So what we will first do is write the conservation equation like a sentence okay like a like a verbal statement. Uh, so that it, it just appeals to us uh, appeals to a common sense without getting into mathematical notation. So here uh, rate of uh, species A generated um, slash consumed by the by uh, chemical reaction. Uh, in in volume V, in volume V, is equal to rate of uh, species accumulated or depleted. in volume V plus rate of uh, species 
species entering or leaving right entering or leaving the surface sigma okay. So there are three things that are happening primarily one you have species getting generated or consumed within this control volume okay and you have species coming in and going out of the control surface. So if you now look at how much of your species A so we will be looking at a particular species A okay so whenever we say C species we should be looking at species A here. the amount of species A mass in this case okay when we say amount we are looking specifically at mass of species A that is accumulating or uh, depleting the rate at which it is accumulating or depleting how much of it is growing or uh, decreasing it depends on how much of it is generated or consumed within the control volume okay plus how much of it is entering or leaving the control surface so in other words we will now see that there are these three things right generated or consumed accumulated or depleted entering or leaving and you have all these things with a, a, a slash in between to say this or that and you can always look at whatever is on the left hand side of the slash they should kind of go together that is if something is generated okay or entering it will get accumulated if something is getting consumed there is it disappears or it leaves it will get depleted okay they, they all go together. So this is, this is fairly straightforward for us okay. The second thing that I would like to point out in this verbal equation is two of them are happening in the volume the other thing is happening across the surface okay. So keep this in mind we will have to apply the Gauss's divergence theorem to convert the surface term to volume term that's that's what that's why I'm basically looking at this okay so this can be now written as um, then a integral over the volume do rho a over do t dv plus integral over the surface m dot s vector dot n hat d sigma equal to integral over the volume w a d v all right here this is the first term on the right hand side of the verbal statement which is to say the rate of accumulation or depletion so how did you get this rho dv is the mass in an elemental volume that is inside this control volume so you now have a dv that you want to integrate over the entire volume ultimately so rho times rho a times dv so rho is the density the rho a is the density of species a times the elemental volume is the elemental mass there and dou by dou t of that is the rate of flux rate of mass uh, accumulation or depletion right um, we do not want to worry about the dv being changing in time because that is like fixed in time so the only thing that is accumulated that is changing is the density itself right uh, there is some that is like the mass concentration as I said so the concentration of the species is changing in time and uh, so this is the rate of accumulation or depletion term that is a volume term we can see that that is a volume integral the rate of uh, mass entering or leaving the control surface is the second term on the right hand side of the uh, verbal statement which we now put on the left hand side of the second term here so this m dot um, m dot a m dot a is the mass flux okay so we have, we, have, we have looked at this as a mass flux so essentially what happens is if you now were to look at a little window uh, on the surface as a d sigma this has a um, m dot m dot a vector mass flux that is cutting across 
at an angle to let us say that is your n hat if this is your um, uh, unit normal locally all right to this to this elemental area d sigma which we want to now integrate over to get uh, uh, the entire sigma um, this is the mass flux that we are uh, looking at that is going at an angle so if you want to now look at the projected mass flux that is coming out that should be the dot product there right and this this now takes care the, the dot dot product will actually take care when you now integrate over the entire surface whether it is going to leave or enter it will take care of that okay. So the dot product could be negative or positive uh, depending upon whether it is going to be entering or leaving okay. So here WA as we know is, is the, the is the reaction this is the mass reaction rate this is not the molar reaction rate okay we are looking at the amount of mass that is produced per unit volume per unit time so this is actually going to be the units units is going to be kgs per meter cubed second. right so this is not this is not to be given by the law of mass uh, law of mass action and Arrhenius law you need to you need to use that expression and multiply by the molecular weight of um, the species A in order to get this because this is mass all right keep that in mind all right now so so we, we now notice that two of them are volume volume terms this is a surface term therefore um, we now use the Gauss's divergence theorem to convert your uh, your uh, surface term to a volume term as well and uh, so we now have a volume term uh, for the first as, as before plus a volume term for the second as well now which is the divergence of m dot a vector dv equal to integral sig uh, over volume w a dv so what you can do is uh, group all of them rho a uh, do, rho, do rho a over do t plus divergence uh, m dot a I am sorry um, minus w a dv equal to 0 here is where we now invoke the arbitrariness of the shape of the control volume that we have considered okay. Now if this integral has to be 0 over this integral for the entire volume for any arbitrary volume in general that is possible only if the integrand is 0 right. So we now get from here for any arbitrary control volume the above can be satisfied the above integral we should specifically say the above integral equation can be uh, satisfied. Only if the integrand equal to zero, so that implies dou rho a over dou t plus divergence m dot a vector is equal to w a. We are still not quite looking at the three fundamental processes of combustion showing up here although we see three terms okay. This is a unsteady term but this actually embeds convection and diffusion together because we now notice that this is actually corresponding to a rho a v a vector where VA vector is the velocity of species A in a laboratory fixed coordinate system or a stationary uh, frame of reference okay and then we will now have to split it into the mixture, mixture average 
the, the, the mass average velocity of the mixture and its diffusion velocity when you do that then we will get into a convective term and a diffusion term separately in addition to the reaction term that is showing up already okay then we will begin to see the three basic processes convection reaction diffusion reaction okay so that is where we are heading we can now do this for uh, species B okay so let us let us say uh, we now say similarly uh, species B do we have to do this again shall we <laughs> right so how would I how would I do this all I am just going to do is uh, wherever I see A I am just going to replace that by B yeah? that is that, that simple um, so I can write dou rho B over dou T plus divergence M dot B vector is equal to WB now let us just go back and call this equation one in this class uh, and uh, let us call this equation two okay let us now try to use fixed law okay using fixed law using fixed law for a binary mixture of species A and B okay that is the reason why we wrote another equation for B it is not like we, we want to have fun with uh, all the letters in the English alphabet and so on huh? <laughs> right. So, so uh, if you now have a uh, fixed law then how do you how, do, how does this work out we can we can now say dou rho A over dou T plus divergence uh, rho a v vector equal to divergence rho d a b gradient y a plus w a and dou rho b over dou t plus divergence rho b b equal to divergence rho d a b gradient y b plus w a w I am sorry w b all right. Is there a problem? I guess not. We had a m dot m dot b. Let's let's pick m dot b in this panel, uh, and uh, m dot b is a rho uh, rho b v b vector. Okay, so v b v b vector could be now written as uh, v vector plus capital v b vector. Okay, so uh, you now write split that, and then you now get your rho b v vector this is the mass averaged velocity of the mixture of a and b then you have the other part you have the rho b capital v b vector and that is actually j b vector for j b we had a negative rho d a b gradient y b all right and you now try to take it on the right hand side you now have a rho D, D A B gradient Y B we already had a divergence so we now have the same thing outside all right so this is how we have actually got these two equations now what happens when you try to add these two so here okay before we do that so we can now begin to see that this is the unsteady term okay that is because the process could be unsteady we now have a rate of depletion or consumption of A uh, so the de depletion or generation of uh, uh, or uh, uh, accumulation of A in an unsteady process so this is an unsteady term okay so uh, you can now say this is unsteady term right this is the convection convection term right 
heat transfer people might probably use convection for natural convection okay but um, aerospace people are used to force convection most of the time so <laughs> and then they, they might call this advection okay so we are like we are convective people so we, we convect so <laughs> all the time uh, therefore uh, this, this is we just call this convection and uh, this is the diffusion term right if you want to now generalize uh, most conservation equations um, well uh, you would call you would have an unsteady term all right uh, let us say for example looking at a momentum conservation you, you may have an unsteady momentum term you have a unsteady momentum convection sorry you, have, you may have a momentum convection term this would be diffusion that would be a viscous effect okay and then uh, this is this is the reaction term in our case but in general this 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 diffusion term could be uh, referred to as a transport term okay uh, or and the reaction term could be referred to as a source term okay and in the case of momentum for example a body force could be like a source but in this case the chemical reaction provi provides a source uh, so these are these are typically what's going on so primarily what's happening is you have a convection diffusion or reaction that's coming up that's that constitutes your combustion process this is something that we have seen in the, in the past all right now let us try to do some uh, interesting thing here let us try to add up these two equations right add the above what would you get you have a partial derivative of rho a with respect to time plus partial derivative of rho b with respect to time that is dou by dou t of rho a plus rho b okay you now are looking at a mixture which has only two species right so rho a plus rho b is nothing but sigma i equals 1 to 2 of rho i what is that that is just a mixture density rho so rho a plus rho b is equal to rho so effectively you now get a dou by dou t of rho dou rho by dou t right so you now get dou rho by dou t plus you can do all the summation all that stuff through divergence and so on no problem so divergence of rho a times v vector plus divergence of rho b times v vector is nothing but divergence of rho a plus rho b times v vector so rho a plus rho b is again rho so this is divergence of rho times v vector right so this is divergence of rho v vector equal to let us look at what happens here right divergence of rho d a b well if you are if you are very picky we should probably put b a d e d b a here right we, we just wanted to like like a computer we wanted to uh, wherever you got a a here we put a b and vice versa to, to get, construct this equation right so we should have put d b a let us do that but then we notice that d a b is equal to d b a we, we, we saw that the other day right and uh, so we, th these two are the same rho is the same in both and then you have a gradient so all, all, all that is going to happen is divergence of rho d a b times gradient of y a plus y b what is y a plus y b that is 1 okay you now have a mixture and y a and y b are mixed fractions okay and this mixture has only a and b so the two, the two fractions together should become unity right and what is gradient of 1 0 <laughs> okay so you now get a 0 what does that mean is, is it because gradient of 1 is equal to 0 that we get this addition right it, it actually tells us the same thing as what we saw the other day for DAB equal to DBA if species A is mixing into species B then species B is mixing into species A they are just having fun with each other nothing else is happening outside of this so you do not have a extra 
um, so the, notice that this is act, this and this are actually coming out from surface terms right so it's so it's it's as if like these two together are all happening inside there is no extra mass of the mixture as a whole that is entering or leaving because of the diffusion process if you now put things together right so that's exactly why the diffusion fluxes the diffusion mass fluxes of all the species together will equal to zero it all looks like they are all interacting with each other but the sum effect the net effect of this is nothing there is really no net mass exchange by diffusion of all the species put together in a mixture okay this is a very important uh, idea that comes out of what we are doing here plus what do you get for w a plus w b can we just write that there if it were a n, co n component mixture right where we had, we had subs subs subscripts like i for the ith species equation we would have written like sigma i equals 1 to n w i would be should we can we we did it in the past we had the sigma i equals 1 to n the question is did we have a w i or did we have an omega i and does that matter Greek or English did that matter did not matter if you were to be looking at omega i that is the number of moles of species i produced per unit volume per unit time okay and you try to sum over all the species you might find that there is like a net mole production in this reaction that we are looking at okay but here we are looking at w which is the mass that is produced per unit volume per unit time right so if you now try to add up the mass that is produced or consumed okay keep, keep in mind things have to get consumed if things have to be produced right if if mass of species i produced per unit time produced or consumed per unit time per, per unit volume plus mass of species b produced or consumed per unit time per, per, per unit volume right what would that be that should be equal to zero because if you cannot have a depleted uh, or consumed you cannot have b produced or vice versa as far as mass goes because mass is conserved in a chemical reaction because chemical reactions are only based on electron exchanges and nothing to do with nuclei right so you get a zero again okay so doesn't look look good to have an equation with two zeros right next to each other it's sufficient to write one and what do we have do we recognize this yeah so this is basically your continuity equation of the mixture as if there was no diffusion going on no reactions going on so when your aerodynamics professor writes this equation for flow past an airfoil okay air, air flow past an airfoil right you could strictly speaking argue with him, him or her that there could be chemical reactions and diffusion of species going on and you would not know <laughs> would you <laughs> right that is that is as that is as far as the mixture is concerned okay the mixture does not really feel these things as far as the mass of the mixture mass uh, mass conservation of the mixture you will find that the, the, the there, there are effects in in the energy of the mixture and so on okay but but as far as the mass of the mixture is concerned it did not matter that you had a multi component reacting flow is not that kind of interesting right so you get back your mass conservation of a mixture as if it is a non reacting single component situation okay. now for fun let us also have um, one more thing that we can do we could uh, 
uh, we could could write we could write conservation uh, species conservation equation we will simply call the species conservation equation that, that was the stuff that we have done here we will simply call this a species conservation equation okay. So we could write the species conservation equation on a molar basis okay we will pretty much get the same thing except that we will just change our notation we will not use um, rho we will use c we will not use m we will use n we will not use uh, w we will use omega right so simple <laughs> right so uh, we could write do c a over do t plus divergence n a dot vector is equal to omega a all right can you do what I said before what will happen if you now write the same thing for a for species b and you look at only a binary mixture okay what do you think will happen you will get C A plus C B is equal to C, right? And you can you can also get a similar similar expression over here. We would we won't recognize this because we never really do a mass conservation uh, kind of thing for mole conservation for a mixture or a non-reacting um, single component species flow, right? But then what's going to happen is this two terms, the corresponding two terms for this, we will have X A and a C. We will have X B and a C right you now add these two you will still have 0 because you are now going to get like gradient of x a plus x b which is 1 again right just like y a and y b right. So this is going to be 0 but omega a plus omega b is not going to be 0 right that is the only difference okay. Now you can do a couple of um, you, you can do one more thing um, um, we, we will have a I am um, sorry we will have a v star we will have a c v star okay we keep keep that in mind so uh, uh, using fixed law <coughs> we get do c a over do t plus divergence of uh, c a v star which is the molar averaged mixture velocity um, equal to divergence of C D A B gradient X A plus omega A right. Now for a for a quiescent quiescent non reacting binary mixture what is meant by quiescent effectively we say V star is equal to 0 right and what is non reacting what is meant by non reacting omega A equal to 0 right. Each of those omega a omega b would be 0 right. So we get do c a over do t is equal to d a b gradient um, c a sorry um, uh, del square that is Laplacian c a right. This is what is called as fixed second law. I remember studying this in high school uh, uh, in, in a verbal as a, as a verbal statement along with the fixed first law of course but later on I found that uh, uh, students in subsequent years have not heard of fixed at all <laughs> okay. Uh, now what does the second law say it says something like 
if the first law were to mean that the diffusion mass flux is directly proportional to the concentration gradient okay the second law then says that the rate of change of the concentration is directly proportional to the second derivative of concentration okay so the, the mass flux is proportional to the first derivative the rate of change of concentration is proportional to the second derivative this is how the fixed laws were formulated but we can find that the first law that we started using cannot be derived from continuum point of view it is stated as a law okay we said we needed that law because we wanted a connection between the mass flux the, the diffusion mass flux that is what else the species is doing other than going with the rest of the mixture we needed a expression for that in terms of a primary variable namely the concentration so that was the constitutive relationship that the fixed first law provided to us and it can be obtained only if you get down to molecular level you need to get into at least kinetic theory uh, or quantum, quantum statistical mechanics those kinds of approaches in order to be able to derive it from fundamental first principles right so you now go through a, a, like a course like a physical gas dynamics in order to explain how you can get fixed law okay and when and, and the two not necessarily very satisfactorily all right so that's a that, that that's a fundamental law whereas the second law is something that you can actually find out from molar conservation for, for a specific for, for a special situation of non reacting uh, quiescent binary mixture right so th this is not as special as the first one good now while we started talking about mixing that is diffusion we have been stuck with binary mixture binary mixture is boring okay we need something more right so let us look at what to do for a multi component system now a, a truly multi component system in a truly multi component system when you say truly that means it is not even binary that is what it means binary is multi component okay but bi is not multi enough okay so we want to have uh, a, like at least three so <laughs> you always look for the simplest situation so in, uh, uh, three um, species becomes complicated okay for us so a, 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 in a truly multi component system that is uh, more than two species right the uh, we can write the species conservation equation okay on, on a mass basis. course that is to say an equivalent of this particularly something something intermediate between this and this that means we will now be we will now say let us let us open up m dot a as rho a uh, um, rho a times v plus rho a capital V a we, we will do that but then we will start blinking because we do not know how to write rho a capital V a which is J a in terms of the concentration gradient because Fick has not said this for us for more than a binary mixture right but we can go up to that point. So we will write this equation by just opening up uh, into a mixture average velocity uh, and, 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 the, and the diffusion velocity we, we, will, we will write up to that point and then we will start blinking okay so not yet at the moment okay so we, we, can, we, can, we can go ahead. So we then say and unless otherwise stated it is always going to be mass basis from now on we will never really go back to molar basis okay. So we will now write this as uh, rho yi for the, this is writing for the ith species right um, so rho a can be written as rho y a all right so similarly I am going to write rho y i over here for the y uh, i th species plus divergence again I am going to write rho a uh, or uh, 
yeah, rho A as rho Y A or in this case for the ith species rho Y I times I am going to write this as the mass average to mixture velocity V plus capital V I right is equal to W I or can now try to do a few things um, pull out the row uh, use chain rule so you can write y i do rho over do t plus y i divergence rho v with a mixture average velocity plus rho rho v dot gradient y i plus divergence rho y i times capital V i is equal to W i okay. So the way, way it is written up is to group these two together right and then notice that this is just y i times this so therefore this can go out all right and uh, <coughs> therefore you have a do y i by do t plus v dot del y i plus 1 over rho divergence rho y i capital V i equal to 1 over rho w i this is this is good enough to to begin with because we can we can get some insights into what is going on you can see that this together you can say dou by dou t plus v dot del of y i right what is dou by dou t plus v dot del that is the material derivative capital D over dt capital D over capital dt of y i okay. So in, 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 a, in a Lagrangian frame of reference you would simply look at a rate of time rate of change of species mass fraction y i as far as this is concerned all right. So this is actually together then called the inertial term okay this this together is called the inertial term inertial term of course you can in an Eulerian frame of reference we notice that there is a basic change in the concentration because of um, with respect to time as well as there is an apparent change because of its motion all right so this is this is this is the distinction between an Eulerian and a Lagrangian frame of reference if you were to go with the particle you will not know that you are moving and therefore you will see everything as only a rate of change of time that is that is what indicates your material derivative right. But then you now step back and say wait a minute all the changes that I went through is because I was truly changing plus I was also going go experiencing the world around me as I was moving this is happening in our lives right. So there is a lot of philosophy in, in, in fluid mechanics you see <laughs> you, 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 you start thinking about this it is very intuitive okay. So if you now look at an Eulerian frame of reference you can now identify this as the unsteady term like before and this is your truly a convective term right. Now the moment you see your capital V i that is your diffusion mass diffusion velocity okay that is the relative velocity of species i with respect to the mixture right. So this is your diffusion term and as before this is your reaction term right. So you always have to learn to read equations term by term 
and try to assign meanings to those terms physically then mathematical equations begin to look like sentences in English okay or, or your favorite language right and uh, these are basically words okay it, it so happens that these words are composed of spellings that are very jumbled looking uh, from, from a language point of view but that's all, that's all it is the equation tries to tell you something and, and it is a string of words that make sense and you have to start looking at each of those terms like words that make sense right and of course um, you know you have to keep in mind these pluses and minuses they are, they are like the uh, verbs and all, all, the, all the things that, that uh, uh, there are thrown in between these meaningful words to convey the meaning for the, for the sentence as a whole right. So this is what we are essentially looking at for the species conservation equation we still have a problem we do not know what is capital VI vector all right but you have to keep in mind now that you are looking at for looking at a truly multi component system this is one equation that represents actually n equations and n could be pretty large okay it could be 5, 10, 40, 100 not more than that mostly <laughs> okay so this is a equation that is actually consisting of large number of equations keep that in mind okay and then the next problem that we have is we have to start looking at a, 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 uh, a, a much more generalized version of fixed law for a truly multi component system that tries to relate your V to YI VI to YI okay and you might be worried VI is a vector capital VI is a vector so it has three components okay so we are actually having three n equations that we should be looking for but fortunately if you are now going to be looking for VI in terms of gradient YI all the three components are buried into just one unknown YI because it is just a matter of taking gradients in different directions for you to get your uh, capital VI right we hope that we will now be able to get a fixed fix law to work for a truly multi component system but unfortunately it is not going to be as simple okay it is going to take some more time for us to get there we will start doing what is called as the multi component diffusion equation tomorrow.